there's a ton to get through today, so I am going to speed through this episode, okay? Uh, all those tabs you see there, there's actually like 20% more. So in your interest and in my interest, we are going to speed through this. Artist Journal, January 19th, 2023, broadcasting to the world from Berlin, Germany. A sunny day out here. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. I welcome you back. And again, a great day for subscribers, for new subscribers. I was looking at the numbers. I mean, it's close to 40% growth on a month, on the month here. So there seems to be some network effects going on. So that is awesome. And let me tell you, Thursdays are crazy because look at all this art and more. I mean, it runs out of space here and then it keeps going. And so... Yeah, because we take the Wednesday for the Twitter spaces, uh, and so we had Rare on, and big shout out to Rare. He was going to release this work here. Unfortunately, I closed the uh, tw Twitter spaces after an hour, as I usually do, uh, so he wasn't able to release it. I should have asked him about it. Anyways, luckily, he tweeted this out. Thank you, Pokebelly and Runetune. Big shout out to the awesome co-host, Runetune who's one of his works we're going to look at today, actually, for having me on today. It was a blast to talk about art and NFTs. It felt like we were just getting started, didn't it? And, I mean, a lot of depth there with Rare. Uh, that's what's great about it. It felt like a true salon, didn't it? I mean, uh, I'm going to have to do some research into Gertrude Stein's salons and see, because that felt like a real salon there, not just in words, but in reality. Didn't get to share this on the spaces, but here is my latest piece. High Fidelity, based off of Breton Riviere's 1869 painting, Fidelity. So I actually have that original painting here. Uh, let me just quickly bring it up here. So you see basically a young man in a prison cell of sorts, and of course the dog. And we talked a lot about the dog, as you might expect, on the spaces, and this Boston Dynamics dog, which really does kind of capture this metaphor for technology, but also for this kind of anthropomorphizing of technology, which is going to probably happen more and more as these robots get closer and closer, like the verisimilitude of these robots to people, uh, you know, our brains are wired in a certain way where, and like, that's kind of what he's nailing here is this kind of empathy and sentimentality we might feel towards this dog having a tender moment, this robot dog having a tender moment with this guy who seems to have had a terrible night. His arm is in a sling, probably a night of drinking or something that's gotten out of hand. And here he is shamefully in prison and his dog his robot dog is comforting him and we had a good discussion so i highly recommend you check out in my feed you'll find the twitter spaces uh and soon we're going to start uploading these to spotify i'm going to talk to rug radio actually today and big shout out to rug radio who's been super helpful along the whole way of just syndication and all these things so your words are getting out there ladies and gentlemen you artists and everybody else i think i'm going to do the finally before we start sprinting here uh, i think we're going to do like a artist spotlight sort of thing or guest you know just to go more in depth uh it's not an interview it's it's a uh, it's a bringing someone into the space and giving them a little more time, right? And then the other, say, three weeks, and it's not a hard and fast rule here. Then it's more everybody comes on and whatever. And so uh, I'm thinking maybe once a month, more or less, you know, we do something like that. Uh, so anyways, it's really cool. And thank you again, everybody who attended uh, the spaces. It was another just awesome all-star cast there from Haiti Rocket. I, I could go on. I could go on and on. So anyways, we discussed this uh, robot here, among other things. And yeah, it really captures uh, kind of this ambiguity with technology and our kind of uh, relationship to these robots that are becoming increasingly you know, seeming like real living things. And also a very nice detail on here, you know, that Rare put out, uh, based out of California, that he put out of the Pepe here. So that is super cool, kind of carved into the wall. Very nice detail. Reminds me of the Tower of London. I, probably some of you, you know, one of those 
semi-torture areas. Anyways, uh, continuing on. So very, very cool work here. And Rare is having a good you know, few days here. A new all-time high. And this kind of speaks to kind of the booming times that seem to be happening, or at least the heating up of the market on Tezos. This does not feel like a bear market at all. As far as, you know, buying and selling NFTs, you know, art NFTs, I should say. Uh, so here, interestingly, a day after he tweeted, let me actually first show you this, or sorry, let me show you this. So the day before that that sale happened, uh, Rare tweeted this, both painted by me, both a few months apart, and both spot my current subject matter obsession but done differently, a good boy on the left, a portrait. So he's basically talking about this work here and he's saying, okay, look at the the change. And yeah, it's, it's quite beautiful. It looks like, you know, it's got a lot of the pleasure that you'd find in an oil painting exists in Rare's work here. You know, and so here's an earlier kind of, you know, so anyways, there's a lot to, and he talks about AI a bit, there's a lot to sink your teeth into here. And again, you can listen to the spaces if you wanna learn more. Uh, but what I want to highlight here, just from a artist perspective is, look at this, he's talking about his work, you know, on January 17th at night, 1126 Berlin time. And at January 18th at 7.45, literally like eight hours later, makes a huge sale, you know, his all time high. So I guess the, you know, the takeaway for us artists here is talk about your work. People, you know, one of the big takeaways uh, of yesterday's conversation is you never know who's watching. You know, for him, it was Cosimo de' Medici chimes in and says, keep doing what you're doing about a year ago. And so you just don't know who's watching. Twitter is really awesome in that respect. Uh, so talk about your work and I say it as much to everybody out there as to myself you know I never do that and I should but you know I should do a lot of things right um, as we all should so anyways this is great to see isn't it and rare also with this great Damien Hirst uh, I guess you'd call it a pastiche we're calling these pastiches where you take original works and then you kind of rework them you know, start substituting in things. Here the shark is, or maybe a goat or something is replaced with the Boston Dynamics dog. Again, conceptually quite interesting too, right? Like, I mean, it really plays off of that original kind of idea. And, and it, back to this idea of life, right? And this perception of life and in this case, death. Uh, so he sold, Rare sold a couple of these. These are editions of 10 for 400 and 500 uh, Tezos kind of reminiscent of Uxine's market here. So this is just getting heated up here. We'll see if it sustains, but I mean, you gotta love to see it. And we're seeing more and more of this on Tezos here. And I, I again, I think we're getting what I'm calling the X copy effect of when uh, X copy basically said, you know, bought some Uxine, they had a little Twitter, you know, handshake, so to speak. And that has, you know, brought over some Ethereum collectors. And uh, yeah, so it seems like those guys are now on, there's a few people, there are new collectors on Tezos and those people are collecting uh, a lot. And I think we're seeing the whole market start to heat up with what I'm calling the X copy effect. And who knows, it could be random and maybe it just would have heated up anyway. But again, you see addition of 10 selling for a hundred here. Again, edition of 10 selling for 400. You know, I think Uxine, he went up to like 12 or 1500 for editions of 10, which is, you know, again, this is kind of like, you know, edition of 24 for 69. These are nice, nice sales for Tezos, okay? 120 edition of 10. So big congrats to Rare. Thanks again for showing up. It was an awesome uh, start to that kind of spotlight series. Uh, this came out a few hours ago here. Speaking of Cosimo de Medici, and for those that don't know that are watching, he's kind of probably the most prominent uh, collector. He spent millions and millions of dollars on NFTs. He's probably the most prominent collector in the NFT space. Today's Tezos artists, XTZ stands for Tezos. Uh, today's Tezos artists are tomorrow's original gangsters. 
are tomorrow's OGs. So pouring gasoline onto the fire here on Tezos, isn't he? Uh, so very interesting. Again, you never know who's watching. He may have listened in on yesterday's spaces because he does follow uh, Rare. So it's all very interesting here on Tezos right now. So again, pouring gasoline onto the fire. A uh, quick correction on it's Yoain. It's Yoain. Yoain messaged me. First of all, it's a he, not a she. And Yoain is how you pronounce the name. So now we finally have that, that cleared up. Uh, Apollo it was like, nice one picking Yoain. Really cool. Just love his works. Good night. Yeah. Thanks, Apollo. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, we started that episode, if anybody's wondering. Uh, this episode here, Prompt Engineers, we started with a couple of works by Yoa In, a couple of his works. Uh, here, this comment's a little long for us to get into here, especially today, but basically Runetune chiming in and saying he agrees that this word renaissance is being used a bit too loosely, and basically, you know, talking about how our moment is special, but we really don't know what the long-term effects will be, basically talking about how hard it is to uh, get perspective of where we are in time and what it means historically. This is my boiling down of Runetune's uh, paragraph here. And read the whole thing. I highly recommend it, by the way. That's from a couple episodes ago. And yeah, this whole, whole idea of renaissance, uh, digital renaissance, is it a digital renaissance? I was thinking about it. You know, he's agreeing it's being used loosely because what is Renaissance, right? And we were talking about uh, the original Cosimo de' Medici back in Florence, you know, the Florentine Renaissance. And really what was that was a rebirth, a re, uh, a re-embracing of what I would call classical values. And that would include, as part of that, aesthetic values. And perhaps, perhaps interestingly, that is how the whole classical kind of renaissance like change in the individual came was through the arts first which is kind of interesting isn't it and now in terms of, so is that what's going on here in our so-called digital renaissance i don't see and so i thought about this and i was thought to myself i think from a direct view i would say no i don't see anybody talking other than this show <laughs> about plato Right. I don't see any I don't see much talk about, uh, you know, ancient Roman Greece here and there. You know, we see Charles A.I.'s Charles A.I. work has some works have some, you know, reference to classical culture here and there. Um, but nothing strong. But I would say indirectly, I don't mind very loosely calling it a renaissance of sorts. And this is what I mean by it, by contemporary art progressively over the last 30 or 40 years has almost, I don't want to say has abandoned aesthetics, but it has trended in that direction to speak very generally, okay, where almost to make something kind of quote unquote pretty and beautiful was almost like a cliche and shows a certain amount of unsophistication. If I was to kind of like paint an extreme view of, and, but there, I, I've been in art classes, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, Whereas like almost like something kind of pretty would almost be kind of somewhat mocked for lack of a, not mocked, but a little less than, you know, almost mocked, right? And so I think what we're seeing in this digital art scene is a re-embracing of aesthetics, the joy of beauty. I think that's what we see in a lot of this pixel art work. A lot of the work we're looking at, just like the work we just looked at there from Rare, is this kind of re-embracing of beauty. So I'd say indirectly, I think we can call it a renaissance in the sense that there is a re-embracing of the joy of beauty and not feeling bad about liking something because it's beautiful. In that respect, and, and in a sense, that is a kind of a classical thing, you know, and, you know, the whole ideas of beauty. And again, we could go very long and very deep on Platonism and aesthetics, uh, Plotinus, as we were discussing in earlier episodes, but we'll save that for future episodes when we have more time. So again, thank you for the comment rune tune. And again, fabulous co-hosting. I couldn't be th more happy uh, with it. He's just doing a great job. And we're gonna look at one of his works today too, uh, later on in the episode. 
Uh, also here, mech.txt waning on this idea of time. A 250 year old artwork, how long does ours could stood the test of time? How long could our art st stand the test of time? I think is what he's trying to say here. And this also brings up another very important issue, which is the big game in the arts, in my opinion, and I think which is actually indisputable, but people can feel free to disagree. It's not money. It's not what your work goes for. It's exactly, it's, can you stand the test of time? It, in 2000 years, is your work still relevant? Does it mean, like, do we need it? Is it necessary? That is the real game here. So in a sense, like people get very blinded and very kind of uh, faked out by the monetary side of things. And, and, you know, I'm big on the markets here and we pay very close attention to it. I find it fascinating and I love financial markets, okay? Um, but the big game is actually time and standing the test of time. That is the kind of the real game here. And so I just kind of add to, to what mech.txt is saying is don't get fooled by, uh, you know, by the financial value that works go for. Sometimes things go for millions and millions of dollars and nobody remembers them a decade later, even 10 years later, okay, or 15 years later. They're just kind of seen as irrelevant. So this happens all the time. So again, this emphasis on this is what we're up to over here, at least from my perspective, you know, so don't lose sight of that is sort of my little addition to mech.txt's point. Rada, I, there's something, he posted some of his ads and I'm so glad he did uh, because probably many of you have not seen this. And again, like if the NFT scene needed a commercial, this is what I would show. I think it should be shown, frankly, at the start of movies. Uh, let's see if we can get it going, actually. Yeah. Fabulous. And that is Cosimo over there, Cosimo de' Medici. And like, what a trailer for an NFT, The Hounds by Rada. Total, like, again, if NFTs ever needed like advertising or something, and I hesitate to call it an ad, but it's, I don't know what else to call it. Like what a, here's another one. Uh, let me just. <laughs> I mean, these are works of art in themselves. I mean, again, I, to call them ads seems to be alchemy lessons. Derivations from Goya and Dark Farms. So, you know, again, like the world can, and, and as far as standing the test of time, and the world can say what it wants about your art, but if you're kind of, you know, in dialogue with the world art tradition, uh, it almost like you're kind of uh, making yourself relevant, I, I would argue. Uh, and there is one more, I think. Is this one? No, this is not one. I think there is one. Maybe it's this guy. Here we go. Let me... Uh... <laughs> I mean, this is what got me over to Tezos, actually, because Radit's work... I actually messaged him, like, a year ago when that ad came out, and I was like, where is... Like, I... He had no idea who I was and I barely knew who he was. I was like, where can I buy that? And he pointed me to OpenSea and it was all pretty expensive. So then I ended up on Tezos, just like Joe Rogan's dad. Let's see. Here it is. Like, 
beautiful, right? I mean, the Medici and the Ancient Bank by Rada. So, really, really nicely done from Rada. So anyways, I had to show you those to you because those are kind of essential viewing to understand, you know, this culture, you know. So anyways, uh, continuing on, interesting comment from Yuri J. Took me some time to start to understand how good Hasdrubal Waffle is. And Yuri J is a very, I'd say, accomplished uh, experimental digital artist, for lack of a better term. Not sure if I would ever get it without po Pokebelly Soft assistance. I, it was a community effort. I mean, Santiago kind of flagged this for me with his comment and as he's this is the most important part of this though this is the future so from an artist you know and an accomplished artist okay so yeah and he started buying actually some his Drupal waffle so speaking with his wallet as well so uh yeah like it's i agree this is quite the work that you guys are doing over there as Drupal and friends. Uh, now, I was sort of mentioning last episode, like, is he a real person? Like, is this just a San Diego, uh, you know, uh, secret account that is, you know, playing us all, which would be amazing. It almost doesn't matter. The work is the work. Uh, but we had got a response from has here from that last episode, awesomely. Uh, with regards to identities, Hasdrubal and Arlen are the results of Santiago and myself generating faces from this person does not exist one evening. Even the names Hasdrubal and Arlen are AI generated it has come full circle with Waffle Draw being partially written by Chat GPT. So Waffle Draw is that uh, drawing program we were looking at, I think it was last episode or the episode before. And we're going to see a bunch of examples. And he also brought up so I was like, oh, you are real. Okay, so this is for real. Uh, there was an NFT this summer about the scenario. Can assure you th that these are just rumors. And I think I brought that up here. Another beautiful, again, these textures, <laughs> these textures are just beautiful. Uh, conspiracy, Santiago and Human Kernel and Waffles doing Twitter. So all very interesting and Little Cakes weighs in. There are so many great side stories to this continuing saga. It's so fun to see and be a participant in the unfolding and telling of them. That is what makes the gang so special. And there is the gang. So all very interesting. And retired artist, formerly known as NZFS. Our friend Pokebelly is making some dangerous questions in his last artist journal journal regarding Hasdrubal's identity. We still haven't heard back again from the last person to even insinuate that Hasdrubal Waffle could be a San Diego sock account, and we wouldn't want anything to happen to him, don't we? <laughs> so anyways, much hilarity, I think, going on on Twitter here with regard to the Waffle situation. That's, I think, what I'll call this, the Waffle situation. Now, I lay... Now, back to the actual technical situation as far as how are these works being made. Uh, I lay ways in. If it's even possible to imagine, Arlen Maltby, Jawbreaker, Retina, Burn, was created, with, was created with one layer and a trackpad on MacBook Pro and Waffle Draw, of course. So, and Waffle, has Dribble Waffle ways in? Yeah, that's exactly how it was made, actually. Sometimes things get into GIMP for a little bit for finessing and coloring, but most of my software is free single-layer kids programs. Kids programs. So very, very cool. There's going to be some more on this front later in this episode. I just wanted to show you an example of people curating on Foundation. Again, I think Object, I don't, they should get on this because wouldn't it be cool? Because once you have curation on Object, you kind of have everything you need almost. You can start a gallery. We've shown how to do that in previous episodes. And then if you can curate a show, you kind of have your whole virtual world ready to go. So they've started to do this on Foundation. So here it is. And I'm not going to load it up, but then this leads to on Cyber, where they also have it hanging in a virtual space. So I thought just kind of interesting. So screen RZ underscore NFT. Uh, new work from Uxine, very cool work. Edition of 20 for 
0.44 ETH. So he did pretty well. This sold out, I think, right away. And again, doing that heavy contrast with painting and pixelation. And you see the pixelation coming out of the broken computer screen, kind of this dystopian, uh, you know, tech death scenario and some great noise over here. So just more beautiful work uh, from Uxine. So congratulations to him, 8.8 .8 ETH. If I do the math correctly there, that is not bad at all. And ETH is doing pretty fabulous right now. So big congratulations, gutted on Manifold, limited edition of 20. And this is Pixel Lord, who is, I've seen on Twitter and has been kind of a big supporter actually of this show in the last few weeks, if I recall correctly. Anyways, he just put out an edition of four, of uh, an open edition at very low price here, 0 0.011 ETH, but sold 460. And so that turns into probably close, if not like to five ETH, right? And then you do the math, that's $7,500 if we have a $1,500 ETH, real money. And this very cool skeleton work, right? And you see all the bones, reminds me of those ossuaries, ossuary, that's so, it, it's such an Italian, I mean, this probably exists in the catacombs of Paris, but in sometimes in Italy, I think it was in Milan, there's an ossuary where you can go and it's literally uh, a room kind of made of bones, or at least there'll be like just the walls will be covered in bones and they'll make almost these semi pseudo sculptures, kind of reminiscent here in the background. So anyways, if you pick up Pixel Lord's work, this ended five hours ago, but had you picked one up, you could burn one for this GM version. So you can burn hope and change it to GM over here. So very cool. Smart mechanics too here. I think the burn actually does help the sales. Now Gloomtube puts out a couple of works and speaking of another artist who is just, as I've been saying, and Joe Rogan's dad as well, like that market is drying up. We're gonna take a look in a second here, but first he put out this pretty hilarious one of one here of a YouTube guy going live. People are getting crazier these days, but not me. So a good satire. And look, I think object is actually letting us, uh, is vertically centering our, our images here, I think. Let's hope that this continues today. Um, so anyways, a good, hilarious satire, again, kind of like a militia guy in the US, you assume, with the camouflage and the American flag and the knife that's going into the table, you know, and the cigarettes, uh, you know, just talking about how everybody's crazy, he's kind of mad, the duct tape and the garbage bag covering the window, full of great details, you know, the wallpaper peeling, the no doorknob in the door, you could probably go on and on, right? Uh, you know, this postcard maybe of happier times over here. Anyways, candy and a microphone, everybody just getting on the mic to do a YouTube show. Really cool work. Uh, went for, there's a bidding war on it. Look at this from uh, these two accounts here, which are both newer accounts. I was looking at them or like new wallets, at least. We can't tell who it is, uh, but only with one page on it of works and the other had three pages of collected works. So newer collectors, perhaps. Uh, and you see the uh, bidding war here from about 420. These two battle it out till it went for 769. So another nice sale on Tezos here. Uh, you know, two or three months ago, these would sell for 300. Now 750. I mean, that's not that long ago for things going for double. Art's crazy. Like one of one art, there is nothing quite like it because when two people want it, it can go anywhere, right? If they have to have it, it can go anywhere. Rob V2, Robness V2 was mentioning that in that tweet that we were discussing earlier. Uh, Gloomtube also sent this out to the, a lot of collectors. I got one of these happily. A beautiful work seems to be I don't know if it's like a Hell's Angels sort of reference or something. Collect and protect. You are protected with this stamp here. I really like the color too that he put in the stamp around it. Collector protector stamp. And yeah, edition of 43, airdrop to collectors. So just to show you 
very quickly, what's going on with Gloom Tubes, uh, you know, market here, uh, like 150, 512. I mean, these are just the prices people put on, but they are significant. 895, 109, 28 for this edition of 107, 75, 5,000. This, yeah, I, I regret missing this one. This was sold for 300. Uh, this beautiful, beautiful gloom tube here in the middle of the night in Berlin here. Yeah, like 5.07 in the morning. It took an hour. That wouldn't happen now, right? Just to illustrate, and this is a beautiful one. Uh, so anyways, and you look at, if we just do low to high, and then we're going to keep sprinting here. Uh, there's not much left under 10 bucks here, considering you know how many very large editions he has, 420, 120, edition of 100. You know, there are a few deals here, but they're really, like, as you can see, uh, it's already 28 Tezos here, and you're still in editions of 100 or 88. So the market is definitely drying up and heating up for is this fire again pouring gasoline onto this fire here on Tezos here new work by the myth which went under my radar uh, I didn't see the notification on this and it came out uh two days ago and this is called Grillo a very nice work still available one of one for 300 and again playing so a red sky here which is super interesting seems to be I'm assuming like a wrestler mask and just beautifully painted as usual. I love these like marks, these painterly marks that he leaves behind. So just doing beautiful, beautiful work. This looks like a procreate work. And I love like how, I don't know if you can see it right here, how the outline is kind of left in that little bit of space. You see it on the cloud too. So just really, really nice painting from Myth. Grillo, uh, edition of one. Not a bad deal, if you ask me. Uh, Board Me Social Club, All the Pretty Little Horses. And he continues with this surrealist, you know, direction, I would call it. Again, you see the guns here uh, with fire on fire. You see this kind of puppet. You see almost these Magritte-like curtains. You see this horse with the long shadow that disappears. And almost like this funeral bed of flowers, perhaps, and also maybe wearing a balaclava or something. Also wearing this kind of camouflage jacket, interestingly. Maybe that's in the air. Maybe there's a Netflix show I'm not watching or something. So anyways, interesting work from Board Me Social Club. Uh, sold for five, edition of ten. And here's another one. This was really reminiscent to me of like a Leonara Carrington work. I think she was... Uh, she was a surrealist, and uh, this really is reminiscent of one of those works. I'd dig it up if we had more time. Milk, Milk Will Cure You by Board Me Social Club, edition of 12, and do a quick checkup, also selling for five. Uh, this is from January 13th, so a few days earlier, but I did miss it. So interesting. Dexter with a one of one for 75. I feel like we're seeing more one of ones here. Doesn't it seem that way? And I find them, as a collector, I would prefer to have one of ones. And even as selling it, it depends on what kind of work it is, right? It does depend on the work. Um, but I do have like a bias uh, towards the one of one. It makes it just, there's something more precious about it. And weirdly, not always, I think it can go for more. Um, but I think there's room for, again, additions and one of ones, because not everybody can afford a one of one, spend even 50 bucks, much less like 400 or whatever. Uh, this is called Journey. And again, playing with the sunset theme motif uh, that Dexter has been working on. Kind of reminds me of going home after a road trip, and it really evokes that, the road. And so there's different speeds of animation, seemingly, with the cars and the water and a beautiful sunset. Buy for 75. <clears throat> Rustic digital art with another wild one in the cloud period series. So again, the clouds now are being done differently. Again, another outrageous decision, I would argue, because uh, it's like, oh, wasn't this the cloud period and they're all supposed to be a certain way? It's really, as I keep saying, this is not easy to do, to break these kind of rules in your head that just naturally kind of place a grip on your thinking these again these reasoning this reasoning that puts a grip on he keeps breaking it which i'm totally impressed by and then you see the totally irrational cropped mario 
So experiments in irrationality and the crop Mario with this kind of like, you know, pickaxe on the person's brain and the big cat. And then again, this decomposed, you know, Super Mario Brothers question mark box, mystery box and more. So just a wild, wild work and some interesting movement. Uh, a lot of people put in offers here and Art Gnome accepted for 30 Okay, this is an edition of 10, I believe. Let me just check. So, edition of 10, and owners, Mikey Wilson, Rustic, Art Gnome, and I did it for the culture. Maybe it's only being sold to people who bought certain works. I don't know. So, anyways, cool work. Uh, Santiago with a few abstracts here. So, just kind of interesting work posted on Twitter, as you can see here. Uh, again, playing with, I like this kind of cream background that he's using too. I think it works really well with these experiments that he's doing. So that is one. This one is an almost finished super rare piece, almost ready to launch my next super rare piece. And so this, I checked and it's not on super rare yet, but again, it has kind of a Pollock feeling, but totally modern and totally his own. I keep wanting to call him a modern day Pollock of sorts. Um, it's really got that kind of vibe. Maybe it's more interesting, I dare say. Uh, but that, my friends, is probably a controversial, a bridge too far for some. But, you know, maybe this is, yeah, an aside that should be saved for another time considering how much we have to go through here. But Pollock is one of those artists that I've found harder and harder, like that I'm not sure is standing the test of time as I see the work in MoMA. Like, I find, I wonder if this will stand the test of time more than a Pollock. Now, that, now I've gone into some pretty controversial territory, so let's continue here. And I picked up this piece, also released by Santiago. Very interesting. Two scenes. So we kind of see scene one and scene two. Kind of has a Rauschenberg feel to just the way it's being handled on the quote-unquote paper here. Uh, two scenes, PNG from a SVG from a stable diffusion image. So again, playing with this recycling here. I think it's just, uh, I was actually in bed and I saw this on my phone and I went up to my laptop. I was like, oh, I got to get a copy of this. Uh, buy it still for 10. So pretty reasonable. Human kernel. So again, we were talking about profile pictures as a placeholder for experimentation. And I mean, human kernel is now on Rarible selling, <laughs> selling on Ethereum. So keeping things interesting over here. I mean, Foundation is open. I, I, I assume he's doing Rarible on purpose, but just so everybody knows, Foundation is now open if you want to use it as a place to uh, mint works, from what I understand, okay? Uh, so anyways, Age of the Side Effects by Human Kernel. So again, looks like the sampled brush and then contrasting that with a experimental pixelated background. And here's a few experiments done with waffle draws. So I lay from the award-winning creator Santiago uh, of this person does not exist. Dot so this is the waffle draws page comes the award-winning composition face of many faces. So we're going to see a few experiments here. So here's a big face, I assume, made of smaller faces and then more faces over here and more faces. Uh, and here are more waffle draws times human kernel. Oh, my heart. So here's another one. And here is another one. Tried this painting with human kernel. Okay, have you seen this? So another one by human kernel. So just interesting to see the experiments these guys are doing. The textures are so rich. And I'm happy to say, Eilay has finally minted a work. I've been waiting for this moment for a while now. Arlen Maltby, Jawbreaker Retina Burn, tribute to PFP of Arlen Maltby by Authentic Waffles, Neat 096. You know, I wish we had more time we're going to come back to this, okay? Because I want to do the comparison. Maybe we have time. Let's. My mic's been acting up. Let, we'll come back to this because uh, I'm curious to see what's going on here and compare. Uh, continuing, Igordo with another waffle, uh, has a waffle draws piece. I quite like the composition on this one. Uh, there's something about this blue, like just from a distance, it's like, oh, that looks like art. Very nice. Uh, and also, his Drupal Waffle has now put out a one-of-one -one collection for all the doodles I have been making in Waffle Draw. So quick and dirty, experimental beta, this human kernel does not exist. Collection is called Draw Raws, and we'll do some quick two-hour auctions starting at one Tezos. So I was looking. Uh, they've done pretty well. 
Okay, this sold for 81. Uh, and here are, here they are. You see the Draw Raws collection here, one of ones. So again, one of ones, right? Uh, how much did this, FH2 picked up most of these, by the way, 70. So waff, Authentic Waffles, his Struble Waffle is on a roll here, 175, okay? Uh, Multi and Guattari sold for 75, again, FH2. Um, and one more here, don't say hi. Hi, welcome to Human Kernel Paint. This is almost like an Italian, like angel coming into the figure, don't say hi. Sold for 50. And who'd that go to? Legojo, shout out to Legojo7, uh, another waffles collector, very nice guy. Uh, Ed Marola, waffle draw should have its own marketplace. <laughs> So all these images should have their own marketplace. And here's the token, waffle draw. Not a bad idea. Why am I not being informed of these very important waffles business decision tweets? So anyways, Ed Marola is enjoying the display as well. So speaking of which, Ed Marola, a couple of works here, climb to the moon and back to the almost the pirate flag work. And again, these almost JPEG artifact pixel artworks with this kind of crazy frame here. Uh, coming from the sides in a moon, person climbing to the moon, maybe a dove with blood, and almost looks like an older Mary and Joseph going into Egypt with an iPad. <laughs> that is my summary of this piece called Climb to the Moon. Just more interesting experimental work by Ed Marola. Here's another one, Lamb Licking Skull. So very prolific here. And just more experiments in pixel art, and they're selling well. Now, this was a one of one. How did it do? Sold for 69 and at auction to Legojo. So there's Legojo supporting the experimental pixel art. Here's a more not JPEG artifact one. This just got released Angle, Long Dream Golden Purple. Oh, they center aligned. Guys, we're back in business here. They have vertically aligned uh, the images again on object, thank thankfully. Really interesting work here. It looks like you could almost make a carpet out of this. Uh, interesting horizontal work from Ed Marola here. Angle. So editions of 35, I think. Would it sell for on primary very quickly here? Four. So he's selling them for a song, but he's doing really well. Four times 35. I mean, that turns into what, 140? And that's a dollar per Tezos. I think it went back down. Minta might need to make a new work so I know where the price of Tezos is. Um, this was a work in progress, which I just thought was interesting. Pinky Blue working in Aceprite, and you see the reference here. And then beside it, uh, you see the work that's being worked on and the palette. So I always find it interesting just how people are working because I might not have thought, oh, I could put my reference image there instead of maybe on another screen or who knows where. Uh, so anyways, just interesting from Pinky Blue. A pixel artwork from Cap'n uh, of an ice cream cone. So just kind of interesting and pretty rough in a good way. You know, so interesting work from Cap'n and also very continuing with what I'm calling kind of a mystical pixel art series. Uh, what is this called again? The Door. The Door. And there is a, our Wanderer type figure with a fabulous kind of a, almost like Arctic sunset of sorts or who knows what, almost an eclipse of a moon or where you can't see the, you know, the moon in shadow here, a crescent. And looking at this kind of waving sea here. So just very interesting, continuing with that pixel art Astral Hazer series, the door. Of liberation from Cap'n. Tom Bombadil, who has been blowing up really, another guy who's doing, who's booming, let's call him booming, space station, so some rockets going up. Again, I don't know where he comes up with all this stuff, but it's pretty interesting. So editions of 26, selling for 1050 each. So he continues to rake it in on kind of like this daily basis here with these nice sales space station. Here's another one, Cyber Pharaoh. He's very prolific. Uh, buy for 25. And what was he selling them for? 1050. So he has raised his prices in the last couple of weeks here. Cyber Pharaoh. Uh, and here, if you just look at his market, 
it like look at the these prices have changed in the last you know couple of weeks here so you know 70 uh again offers for 12 offers are really significant because it shows that there's like people want these works and they're willing to pay for them now so anyways this ufo work 50 so super interesting uh just a pixel artwork i saw on twitter that sun i got actually two windows of sun that's why my face is extremely bright here. I have two windows reflecting the sun somehow. I'm not even sure how that's possible. Uh, Alley of Memories. Uh, this is on Tezos, actually. Let me just play you. It has some music. music as usual with these guys and then some movement with the light it's kind of flickering on and off we are journeying to new continents of the mind my friends music by Buju Guning so anyways that goes for a minute 27 so alley of memories sound on about the story we made up when we walked through that alley so just kind of beautiful work Again, this like that is the renaissance I see of this kind of re-embracing of kind of, for lack of a better term, just not simple aesthetics, but pure, pure, just kind of beauty for the sake of beauty, you know, and, and that being OK. Um, here's another interesting pixel artwork. Now, we know the artist. Remember Stalamir, who puts that really strange pixel art series together, ones with the wheat field and, you know, inside the controls. Uh, so anyways, uh, inside the spaceship of sorts with controls or the octopus in the next one. So here's just, uh, you know, runes. Uh, so maybe he's a pixel artist, like a true, like working pixel artist. Half eagle, half snake, this chimeric relative of the cockatrice inhabits the sand. So anyways, some kind of monster of sorts, a bird snake of sort, day serpent. Okay, so back to giftstudies.tez. I forgot to mention, and I actually didn't even notice on the last one, these are teletext, okay, which is some sort of software uh, that is being used that can be broadcast, I think, to TVs. And so GIF Studies has been experimenting with that. What is this called? A circled square, interestingly. I like how paradox this is, how paradoxical this is, how patterns seem to freeze but still propagate the moment, the movement. So how patterns seem to freeze. Yeah, you see how certain areas are kind of frozen there? Anyways, very interesting. Sold out again, edition of seven. More pixel art, this time from Essam. Noxious Orb is sold out thanks to the legendary final sweep of 126 orbs. So maybe this was a generative art uh, piece. Anyways, I just thought interesting pixel art. And this is on form function. And remember Sabato? If you were in the Twitter spaces, it's mentioned how there's a lot of abstract expressionism type work um, on Solana and form function. And the crypto itself seems to be breathing a certain life. Here's some abstraction. I don't know if I'd call it abstract expressionism, but here's some abstraction. Let's see if there's any volume here. There is no sound. Um, but anyways, interesting kind of work. Temperamental, one of one. Current bid is for one sol. sol. So you can get a pretty cheap one of one here on Solana on form function. And here we have a couple of Nintendo glitch ROMs. This is from Glitch David, who we started looking at recently. Very, very experimental. Like wild experimentation here. Like, wow, eh? I mean, this is what you want to see, ultimately. You want to see some wild, like, push the boundaries here. Very cool. So, I think it's almost over. Uh, yeah, so anyways, you get the picture. Uh, that is Glitch David, buy for a Tezos, edition of five. Okay, so that's a pretty reasonable price. And Glitch Town Arcade uh, is on uh, foundation for 0.1 ETH. And I, is there music? There is. So another kind of glitch, Nintendo, Nintendo glitch ROM. 
It's kind of cool music too. Fear nothing. So that is on foundation. Let's see. Let's see if I can. There we go. So, anyways, so more developments in the glitch ROM world, and of course, Kurt Hustle Collective. They have some new works, also kind of playing with video games, but in a slightly different direction. Punch Pong. So player one, you know, almost a Mortal Kombat type thing. So, and they just, Kurt Hustle Collective just put out this block hustler. Uh, let me see. I think I brought it up. Yeah, here it is. You can get the block hustler uh, ticket. And let me just see. And then here is Butter from Peanut and Butter. So it continues over at the Kurt Hustle Collective and a very sweet looking butter. So keeping things sweet and interesting over at the Kurt Hustle Collective, I never know what they're gonna do next. Uh, it's very unpredictable and the great pu puppet pioneers, you gotta love it. So I love it all. Uh, continuing on, Day Inc. This was just, I don't know if it's from a collection or what, but I just thought some interesting uh, digital experimentation over here, right? Kind of dynamic, abstract experimentation. Uh, D-A-E-I-N-C. And here's another one, Nicholas Daniel on Twitter. Good morning. So just kind of interesting, right? I mean, right. So more experimentation here on the blockchain. A couple of more from Eitso who did the couch. Uh, that great glitched out couch. Well, he's got a chair now and a glitched out chair. So really cool. I really like this series. It's so simple. Uh, buy for 25, edition of 20. So I think this sold out pretty quickly, actually. So people are digging the glitched out couches. Maybe I'll go to the other one while that loads up. And the bed, now selling for 50. I should have picked these up. Uh, so really cool, the glitched out furniture. It's such a simple idea uh, and so effective, isn't it? Three second loop there. We'll see if the, see if this loaded up. Yes, you could, yeah, buy for five and it sold out within about, you know, this is another, you know, the booming Tezos, right? Like, I mean, if you're selling your editions in like five minutes after listing it, that's what's happening here. And here it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So if you're an artist and you're thinking about getting on the blockchain, uh, yeah, take a look, build a bit of an audience and, you know, things can happen for you. It's pretty awesome. Future Bed. I love that title. More music. Uh, so I'll quickly, quickly play this. House of the Model with more great music here. Let me just adjust. Got a nice Detroit, our, our party. Like, really nice. So, I want to pick this up. Uh, just nice kind of Detroit feeling. House of the Model. Good, good name. Good vibes. That happy kind of late 80s, early 90s vibe. Which is kind of in style again. You know, you know, Final thing on this, like at New Year's Eve, we had Flux FM, which is the big kind of Berlin uh, cool radio station. It sounded like the 90s, like the early 90s. Melodies like this are totally back in from, from what I can tell. You guys are the experts, but anyways, I'll stop this. Totally awesome music though. Uh, even really cool kind of visual here. Was this working with anybody? Uh, I don't know, maybe House of the Model did the artwork too, but I'm all over it. Like, it, should we have a Tezos party? I think uh, House of the Model is in charge of the music. Uh, he gets my vote anyway. Um, artist I don't think we've seen before, Ranix Deer, for lack of better pronunciation, Magnetic, and just an interesting series. It's selling 0 0.066 on Foundation. And again, using this kind of like collection thing. So... What I like about what Foundation is doing is they're really starting to push their product in the sense like the product development is, what would you call that? The product, uh, you know, product manager or whatever you'd call it. They're really like the curation and then these collections which artists are adopting. 
you know, foundation could have disappeared, but they kept themselves relevant and they keep adjusting just like they got rid of the invites and now anybody can mint on foundation. You know, like they have really managed to keep themselves in the game here in a major way. So here's a close up of one of these just interesting abstractions here. Magnetic number two, this was out last week. And of course, Runetune, who the co-host on the show with a very nice work here, kind of illustrative, kind of like the other ones, but this time with more texture in the mix here and looking very nice. Language is a barrier to entry without it, you remain outside, lo siento. Maybe this is based on his trip to Mexico, which you can hear all about on the last Twitter spaces <laughs> that we released. Anyways, I think it looks really cool. No puedo hablar, and I think it's sold out already. Buy for 16 on secondary. Let's just take a quick look here. Uh, selling for three, so selling for a very uh, reasonable price here and was gone within the hour. So it started selling at 5.11 Berlin time and sold out, not by 5.12, I think by 5.12. Well, the four editions, anyways, Runetune is doing very nicely and they're getting out there. So nice work there and kind of reminiscent of that last work we looked at, stressed. So I don't know what lo siento means in Spanish, but, and you see kind of part of this series here with the head and here and somewhat here. So anyways, cool work from Runetune and continuing on. So I should have picked this up. And uh, I should have picked up this work by Flora Marquez for 10 because look at what happened. And she does all those great stamps. It was a one of one. I just kind of like got complacent, I guess. I had no Tez in my wallet. Uh, one of these beautiful one of ones. Look at what happened. 4,200 <laughs> someone wants for it. Uh, so anyways, she's releasing one of ones for 10 Tezos and she's a pretty cool artist. So uh, Mentalist 420. Uh, took the initiative while I was just like sat on it for a day. I mean, Burka Byram, this is interesting as well. A tribute to Francisco Goya's La Maja Desnuda, again, showing depth in this scene. So here is the Burka work, and I'll show you the, the, the Burka work. And let me show you, I brought it up here, uh, the Goya. La, I've never seen this painting before. And, actually, and it's interesting, there's a nude version and a clothed version which is kind of interesting in and of itself. Uh, so here it is up close. And let me see, I think we're already into the weeds here of the tab, so I actually can't go back. But anyways, you see the Burka Byram, uh, you see the, let me see, okay, we can, good. Uh, here it is. So really putting his own spin on it with the patterns, and he's been around Tezos for one of the longest kind of uh, artists on Tezos, and he has a huge following. Uh, continuing on, uh, also with the art history vibe, we have Daniel W. And this one I missed, when did this come out? January 13th, and Arrangement in Gray and Black, number one, Whistler's Mother. So again, another, like, I'll show you the original. Now, really look at this one, because I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to go back here. Um, but you see this, and then you see, I brought up on Google Arts and Culture. I quite like Daniel W's. Uh, I think it's a very nice, colorful rendition here. It kind of brings some life into the work. Uh, so this is the Whistler piece. So again, uh, you know, you sh it shows the depth of the scene uh, that people are referencing art history left and right. And here you can again see it here, like there's a lot of nice, fun color and interpretation in Daniel W's work here. And he also put it some physical NFTs, interestingly, over here. And I'm not sure if this one's physical, Tria Prima, but anyways, you can see lots going on over here with Dan W. We are at 15, I gotta run. Uh, and here's some works in progress also from Dan W. Uh, we're in the AI side of things, and this is interesting. So varia.jpg, this is using just, uh, AI, raw AI, and then she adds digital painting to it. And then she does a comparison. Like this is useful to just kind of like see side by side, what is the difference? Is one better than the other? Is it worth it to do it? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, you know, and really changed a few things too. So 
Very interesting there. Sky Goodman with a couple of sneakers here. Underground Shadows Highs AI and Pixel Sort Kicks. So some really cool moody, almost has a kind of a Mercury, the messenger god feel to it uh, with the wings coming out of the shoe and some nice glitch work in the background, very nice color. And another one, deconstructed basketball sneaker. So pretty cool work from Sky Goodman. This is an edition of one available for 155 Tezos, which is, seems pretty reasonable for an artist that's as well known as Sky Goodman. The first in a line of deconstructed basketball sneakers textured from the Genesis painting in the basketball series, hand sculpted in virtual reality rendered in Blender. So again, he uses a ton of different softwares and exports, and I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, Georgie Family Business, GM to people who never stop moving, have a meaningful day. A nice message with some very cool hands here. I assume this is AI, but I'm not positive. We've looked at Georgie's work before. Clown Vamp has minted the uh, the Genesis work, his Genesis work on Super Rare, Bubble Boy, takes us to 2032 when traditionalists have won over have won out over AI artists and instituted strict rules for training new artists. So now they're stuck in the bubble, I guess, now minted. And I brought that up on Super Rare. And it is selling for three ETH already, 4.6,000, so $4,600 US. So very nice bubble boy. Uh, reserve has been met. So a nice start for Clown Vamp there. And look at this. The reserve has been met for Charles AI's work of five ETH. The reserve was five and he got it. So congratulations to him. Meme Paulus. And so he collaborated with, a two, with two other artists. And you see, you know, 6529 here, uh, Punk 6529, and sees the memes of production. And here we see the ancient Rome and everything with a lot of things flying in and through. So an ambitious work. Do we have noise? Do we have sound? No sound on it. Sound might just like overwhelm me with that piece. So anyways, congrats to them. Uh, who's the others? Uh, VFX artist Val and Pixel AI artist Pixelosopher. Interesting, Pixel AI artist. We'll have to look at his work. Maybe we have, or her. Maybe we have looked at their work. Uh, Marina Amadova has just released a collection. My first drop on Foundation will consist of 50 unique pieces. So another one of these collections on Foundation. Okay. So, you know, we've seen the open edition trend. Maybe this is another really cool trend and I'm curious just to look at how this is all structured. Things are getting, it's so exciting right now to be a digital artist, isn't it? I mean, there's so many great tools and ways of, it feels like a golden age, you know? Uh, and, you know, again, that's why people use the word like Renaissance, because there's, it's just like, or I, maybe golden age is better. Maybe it's both. Uh, Delta Sauce here who has been doing fabulously, going to be using the allow list. They have so much demand for their work, they're creating allow lists, just like Acid Boy the other day. So Acid Boy did this yesterday. I'm going to be using the allow list that I've curated for the next edition drop. If you'd like to see it, your address is on it. I made a Google Sheet, so you can check if you're available or if you can allowed to, to buy this work here. So more AI from Delta Sauce. I thought a really nice work by What is Iana? Uh, link and pin tweet, five of 30 days. I like the bold composition here. I guess using AI and digital painting, I really like the break uh, of just trying something different here. So nice experimentation. Son of Stag has been doing a lot of AI as well, as you can see, using rainbows and almost like old photographs. Digital art inspired by the dimensions of the atoms and the mycelium. So two decades in, Son of Stag. So put out a bunch of, and low edition, uh, some of it's already going. Uh, the one of one has gone and there's an offer for 20. So if you're looking for low edition AI works, you see the one of ones, I tell you, they're so desirable. Collectors will just buy them and they'll just like automatically, they will just buy them if they think it's a work that they like. Look, an offer for 35. So it's doing quite well. I brought up the Twitter uh, where Son of Steg showed some other works here. So you can see them up close and personal here. So just interesting AI work from the Rainbow Council Estate, which is pretty much sold out last night on object, just two editions left on primary. 
I didn't expect anybody to care and almost scrap them. So thanks for picking it up, everybody. So it's great times to be a digital artist. Here are a few more. Okay. So uh, I'll accept offers for the two one of ones. And so maybe that's what's going on with those offers for the one of ones. People offering 35. These are respectable numbers, guys. Uh, and there's another one. Again, these old photos with rainbows in it. Uh, Edge Q, uh, ancient techniques, part of this sort of series with like producers in kind of like, uh, not quite maybe Renaissance, but almost like kind of secret society gear. Ancient techniques, nice title. Buy for five Tezos edition of five. I don't know if nobody's bought yet. I might pick one of these up just to complete the series and it's a nice looking work. I really like that series. And Polly Jojo, edition of five for Jacques Diable en Boite, which I thought was another, so almost a jack-in-the-box via AI and quite a nice kind of haunting one too, isn't it? Uh, available for 25. This looks like this sold out. We shall find out if this ever loads. Here we go. Sold very cheap on primary and now listed for 25. So nice work, Polly Jojo. It's better to move your work than to not move it. I say it to myself more than anyone. Uh, Audrey, so a few works by Soom. Uh, Audrey, uh, so some new of these AI works uh, with kind of these portrait figures, kind of mysterious, frankly, we have a few of them. So you can see here the series. So she's shifted from the rooms to these interesting, odd portraits. And so anyway, it's very interesting. So I thought we could take a quick look. One of one, by the way, for 100. Nice laptop in the background. Another one of one, this one for 200. Melody. So strange, unusual works. Let's put it that way, Maeve. Uh, so nice experimentation here. Almost looks like camouflage here. Uh, a one of one for 100. And almost done here, folks, uh, we have, who is this? This is Oblique Oblivion, of course, with almost these Dali-like clouds here, but totally sculpted in a city. So interesting. Here's another one also found on Twitter, The Precipice of Vulnerability. So kind of almost fantasy. Uh, and here's another one, again, very reminiscent of Dali-like clouds, Salvador Dali-like clouds, those suggestive clouds. And finally, Mr. Shapeless with an awesome, more suggestive clouds. I think Dali would love this one here, especially. Uh, and just classic Mr. Shapeless. And Kava Lel, who I lay, uh, showed a few artists. Mech.txt really likes the work, and I like it too. Just some nice physicals on the blockchain. Seems to be Kava Lel it has a bit of a horse theme here. As you can see, another buy it for 0.3 edition of 20. You kind of can't go wrong with that e-tone. That's your show, everyone. Next time, I will try and make it shorter. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.